Hello everybody, welcome to another screencast presentation. My name is Mitchell Parsonage, I work for Modena Design Centers in Cape Town and today I'm going to be taking you through a super simple easy way to start generating some basic geometry uh, from within Dynamo for Revit. Um, so this is really useful, it's a very flexible method to, to generate forms and to also adjust those forms. So we're just going to create a very, very basic surface by using four points and two lines, just to show you how actually how easy it is to create and how easy it is to adjust as well. So I'm going to open up Dynamo and I'm going to start up a new graph. And this is out of the box Dynamo as well. So there's no custom packages or nodes. It's going to be everything that whoever has Dynamo has access to. So there's no special requirements here whatsoever. All right, so there are two basic ways that I have of getting geometry from Dynamo into Revit. Um, I can either use um, a forms node over here where I get some, some model lines from within Revit and I can use that to create my information. But what I'm going to rather do is I'm going to export the form that I generate with Dynamo as an SAT file, which I prefer to use because that gives you the ability to use, if we switch back to Revit, your model by face tools to create real river geometry off of that dynamo surface. So to start us off, I'm going to create four randomly placed points. All right, so I'm just going to right click anywhere on the canvas, start typing the word point, and I'm going to use this first option, point by coordinates, x, y, and z. So this is just asking me to insert the x, the y, and the z coordinates. And I can see in the background over here that I've actually got a point created already. That is just because when you drop the point by coordinate node onto your workspace, all of these default values are set to zero. So every time I place a point node onto my workspace, it'll automatically create a point at the origin of Dynamo, zero, zero, zero. So I'm gonna copy and paste this node, and I'm also going to input a number node. So right click, type number, and here is a number node. Um, actually, instead of using the number node, I'm gonna use a slider which is basically the same thing as a number node but that gives me the flexibility of being able to adjust my point on the fly which is a really nice uh, ability to have so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this integer slider copy and paste that as well and I'm going to connect that up to the Z axis as well so that I can control its vertical height as well as its run along the X axis Okay, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this group of information over here. Because remember what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to create four points. So I'm just going to vary this information. And I'm also going to give myself um, another integer slider over here for me to control the Y axis. So that I can push this point a little bit further away. Okay, and I can just obviously experiment and play with this in any way that I want to, so I'll put that up a bit. Copy and paste all of this information. And I'll increase the x-axis over here. Make that a bit lower as well. Great. So these are my four points that I have. Two along the ground plane, and then two are sort of floating randomly. Now, this is all the information that I need to start generating some lines. And then from those lines, I can generate a surface. So Dynamo often works in this way. And what I mean is it's a logical buildup. So you first start with your foundational elements, which are your points. Point is the most basic bit of information that we have in Dynamo. From those points, we evolve to the next uh, data type, which would be a curve or a line. So we're taking two points, and now we're just connecting them together with a line. And I'm going to do the same thing with those points over there. So I'm going to essentially have two lines, one from this point to that point, and then one from this point to that point. Those two lines can then be used to generate a surface. So we start with points, we evolve to lines, and then we evolve to a surface. And if we wanted to, we could evolve that further to a solid. We're not going to go that far in this exercise. So I need to start creating lines. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to start typing the word line and I'm going to use this first option here by start point, end point. Select that. 
I'm going to input my origin point into the start point, and I'm going to input my point that I created over here into the endpoint. And I will see that a line is developed between those two points. So I'm going to copy and paste this line node, place it over here, and I'm going to do the same thing with these ones. All right, so there are my two lines. So that is all the information that I actually need. And now I can start to generate a surface using these two. So I'm just going to put these two line nodes quite close to each other because we are going to need to combine them in just a second. So what I'm going to do to create a surface, I'm going to right click, I'm going to start typing the word surface. And the option that I'm going to use is this option over here called byloft. And there is a, a, a term in brackets there called cross section. So if I drop this in and I hover over the input, it's asking me those square brackets next to the word curve that indicates that it's looking for a list. So this is looking for a list of lines. So you have to have more than one line to generate a surface. And I can see that I've got two lines over here, but I only have one input. So obviously I can't take this information and plug it into the cross section because I'm going to get an error because that's only one line. So I have to find a way of taking both of these, combining them into one node, which I can then output. So to do that, I'm going to use the list create node. So this is a very easy way of combining multiple data types together or just creating multiple elements um, into one node. So the list create node is quite a unique node in the sense that it's got a plus and a minus sign over here, which allows me to add or subtract inputs whenever it is that I want to. So I can connect my first line, give myself an additional input, connect my second line. Now I've got both of these lines stored inside this one node, and I can just output that information to my surface by loft. And there is my surface. Okay, so again, the benefits of having this setup, and remember, this is a very, very simple surface. There's nothing complex really happening here. But I do have the flexibility to adjust the surface now whenever I want to because of the way that it's been set up over here. Okay, and we can have that feedback into Revit as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this surface as an SAT file. Okay, so to do that, right click and I can just start typing the word export. And here I would export to SAT. I'm going to drop that into my workspace. And this node requires two inputs, the geometry that I want to export, which is my surface. And it also requires something called a file path. So literally just where on my computer do I want to save this information? Okay, so the units I'm gonna set to meters. And the file path, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna start typing the word file path. And there is a specific node for that. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna click browse and this is literally just a, it's just a save or an export feature. So I give it the name that I want it to be called. So I'll call this uh, Dynamo Surface and I'll place it onto my desktop. And then I will connect that last node to the file path. Okay. See that the error clears. My header turns a solid black color at the top over here. That color means that this node has everything that it needs in order to perform its operation. Okay, so just a quick side note, if I drop in something like a plus, you can see that a plus node requires two inputs, X and Y. It doesn't have any, so its header is a light gray color. Okay, but as soon as I start to input that information, it'll turn a dark black. Okay, so just a quick side note there. Okay, so I have exported that SAT file. If I minimize it, Great, so I've got my information exported. I'm going to put uh, these two applications side by side. Actually, as I'm saying that, I think I'm actually going to skip that because of the screen recording software that I'm using. So I'm going to head back to Revit. Okay, and here in Revit, I, I don't want to just insert and then come here and link in a CAD file directly into my normal Revit environment. I actually want to go into my massing environment. So I'm going to select massing in site. I'm going to select um, in place mass. And I'm going to link it into this section, which is going to give me more control over this item. 
So in my massing and site section, I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to select link cat. I'm going to switch my file type from a DWG to an SAT file. Go to my desktop and there is my Dynamo surface. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to open that up. Okay, and quickly switch to a 3D view. Okay, so here is my Dynamo file now in Revit. So I can accept that to finish that mass. And the reason why I've done that, the reason why I've imported it into my massing and site section is because now if I go to my massing and site tab, I can use my model by face tools. So curtain system, for instance, and I can select that and I can turn that item into a curtain system. Okay, and if I want to adjust this, it's very simple now because I've got my Dynamo script open in the background. So I can literally just go back to Dynamo, make whatever adjustments I want to the form here. So let me increase that a bit, lower that side just a little bit. I'll raise that far side over there. Okay, whatever it is that I want to do. And that information, because I've got my execution bar down here set to automatic, it's already export to that item again and because i've linked this into revit now i can just go and update that link so if i go into my insert manage links cad formats select it and i select a reload okay that information adjusts there's my new information that i did uh, that i changed in dynamo obviously my form hasn't adjust it just yet but if you're familiar with the massing environment you'll know that all you need to do is select that curtain system and just select update to face okay and it reapplies it over that new dynamo form that i've created okay so just a very quick and and simple way to create forms and you can take this concept and you can obviously go quite in depth with it. Okay, this is a very, very basic form that we've created, literally just a series of two lines, one in the back over there, one in the front over here. And we're just using those two cross sections to generate a surface. You can use several different cross sections to generate quite an interesting form, but the, the real power from all of this just comes from the flexibility that you have in order to adjust that form. Because adjusting this form in Revit, yes, it's it's fine it's fairly easy to do that using the massing environment but we don't have the precision that we get from dynamo over here and and just the the immediate flexibility and the results that you can generate from dynamo it, it's far quicker to do things using this sort of computational workflow than it is to go into the massing environment and manually change information around so i just wanted to quickly show you this routine to maybe get you started with creating some forms in Dynamo or just to get you interested in maybe having a look at what Dynamo can actually offer and what it can do for you. So I hope that you found this useful. If you have any questions or if you want me to expand on anything, um, just let me know. Other than that, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.